I like to encourage us this day that we should not be downcast. Amen? Amen. You will fulfill your purpose. Amen. And before we just pray, I like to title this fulfilling your purpose. Amen. Our text is taken from Ephesians 3 20 to 21. Fulfilling your purpose. I also like to encourage us to be to be reading our devotional. They strengthen our is the food of the spirit that we eat. I I had the inspiration for this message and I've been praying about it through the reading of uh, the open heavens and the word for today. Uh, they are quite rich. I will be subscribing to this devotional. Please don't just throw them away. Amen. Amen. Fulfilling your purpose. The scripture says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. That is, those things that we ask or think, when you put them together, they are called the desires of our heart. He said, according to the power that worketh in us. According to the power that worketh in us. That means, the solution to everything that we ask or think, which is equal to desires, the solutions are resident in us. We already have the solution with us. He said, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him, who is that power that worketh in us? Jesus. Now, the next verse says, unto Jesus, that is, him, who is the power that worketh in us, be glory in the church. He didn't say in my home. He didn't say elsewhere. He said in the church, that is, in the gathering of his people, in the fellowship of the saints. By Christ Jesus throughout all the ages. Not even, it's not seasonal and it's not generational. Throughout all the ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The journey of our life can be likened to the journey of the children of Israel. Let's, let's just look at it. The, the way the children of Israel had been in bondage, of, we can say... They've been in bondage. How many of us have been in bondage of sin? How many of us have been in the bondage of not knowing the future? If you are still a sinner, oh, maybe that's a very strong word. If you have not given your life to Christ, let me be politically correct now, if I want to. That is, oh, everyone who, is not, who has not given his life to Christ is a sinner. Eh? If I don't want to be correct, politically correct. But if I want to be politically correct, I can say, if you have not given your life to Christ, you are still in bondage of sin. I'm sorry to say that because it doesn't make anything to you when you tell a lie. It doesn't have any, you don't have any qualms when you do not do what you ought to do. You don't have any qualm when you wish another person evil. You don't, it doesn't make any it's not, it's, it, it doesn't make, it doesn't, you get what I mean. But if you have, when you have given your life to Christ, your life is regenerated. You can no longer undo sin. You know, for instance, for me, there are a few things that I can't undo. Praise the Lord. The way I can't undo some of these things, just like there are some food that you and I cannot eat. Amen. The way you feel when they bring that kind of food and you cannot eat it, that will be the way, that will be your reaction to sinful acts. Things that I used to do, I do them no more. Oh, things I used to do, I do them no more. Oh, things I used to do. You should be holding Michael. I do them no more. So that you can... Kicking when I'm singing my own. Amen. Amen. You know that song? Uh, don't mind them because they're not helping me this morning. So, if you have not given your life to Christ, you are still in that bondage. And God cannot behold 
iniquity. So I like to, as we continue, if you have not given your life to Christ, consider it. It's not thing, something that one can force another person to do. It's not. It's a way of life. And doesn't mean that you have been coming to church every day. Even you have a spare key to the, to the door of the church. It doesn't matter. Is something that you must be checking every day, every hour. Preparing for the day of God. The day of God will come to you, will come to me. The day of God is the day that we will meet God in Kudisa. You know, <laughs> there will come a day that we will meet God in Kudisa. No where else to turn to. Amen. The day that we die. You meet God, the could desire. No other way. You can't have it. You don't have any choice. The die will be cast. Am I too strong? Okay. Let me come down. Now, what I'm saying is that the journey of the children of Israel, they were in bondage. But it came to a time when they were set free. It came to a time when Jesus came to set us free. When he conquered death, when he conquered sin. That was the time they were released. And when they were released, lo and behold, they were going to go to the promised land, but that promised land was not served a la carte. Who knows what a la carte means? Huh? It's ah, old school, yeah, they don't know what a la carte means. So. A la carte is served. Praise the Lord. It's served. It's served. It is not that you go there, it's not buffy. Amen? So, promised land was not served to them on a platter of gold. Even though they had been released, they still met challenges on the way. That is the way of our lives. Even though we, 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 we are talking about fulfilling purpose, even though we know that we are going to fulfill purpose, there are stages to fulfilling purpose. But I will look at a perspective of it today. Three ways. There are times we get to a point, number one, we get to a point of not enough. When you are still in bondage, you are in a stage of not enough. When the children of Israel were still in bondage, all their needs were being met by Pharaoh. They would walk, Pharaoh would give them money. They depended, they depended, good English, is it? Okay. Okay, if it's not, you know, you have not complained, so it's correct. <laughs> on, on, the, on, on Pharaoh, just like we depend sometimes on government. We depend on what government will do. We depend on what government will say. We depend on when they will do this. That is where our satisfaction comes from. Relying, now another way to be when you are still at the threshold of bondage is that you are relying on man. When you are relying on man, instead of relying on God, it is still the stage of not enough. Because man will not be able to give you everything. That was why Jesus came. My wife was we were talking this morning, and she said, is it not that Jesus, when Jesus finished his course, and the veil broke, that is, everybody now had access. So, it is no longer one Baba at one holy mountain to pray for you. You have the, so when you are still at that level, it is not enough level. Because the, uh, when I was talking to um, the Kibola on the road, I said, if you go to mountain to pray, know the kind of mountain you go to. Because when you get to a, that mountain, the, 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 not the, the anointing you will get from that mountain cannot exceed the anointing that has been placed on the man who is in charge of that mountain. You can't. But when you go to the mountain of God, that means your anointing is limitless. So when you are at the level of not enough, you have not gotten to a level where Peter said, cast your body upon Jesus for he cares for me. 
Amen. And it is not also, it's confirmed in Psalm 60. Psalm 60, if you read 11 to 12. Psalm 60, 11 to 12. That Bible, the Bible passage, the one that interests me there, I say, Vain is the help of man. Ha. Very few people will give you, will be benevolent towards you, if there is nothing good that will come out of it for them. It might not be material gain. It might not be anything. It could be just ego. Oh, I'm the one who did that thing for, for, for him. Praise the Lord. Vain is the heir of man. So not enough mentality is born out of not understanding that God is our great provider. Ah, look at what God did. Somebody said God is the best comedian. He makes us happy. He was providing for Elijah. He fed him. He fed him and watered him by the brook. What is the name of that brook? Chariot. Ah, at a point, he asked ravens to come and feed him. Then, one day, ravens, they refused to come. He got to a brook, Cherit. The brook had dried up. And the man who wanted to run away and was beat today in the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord will help you from unusual quarters. Yeah. Ravens, if you know ravens, they are, this most, they are the class of the small birds. They were bringing meat to come and feed a grown-up man. Meat enough to feed a grown up man. Even those ravens themselves, if uh, if Elijah were to swallow, they would not be enough. But they were the one you can know the number that God gathered to be able to bring enough meat that will feed him. Unusual quarters. God will, will feed you, will supply your need, will, will strengthen you. Even from unusual quarters. He got to a point, the brook where he was uh, even drinking dried up. The ravens, they didn't show up. And God said, okay, there is still a solution. He now sent him not to the king, not to princes, not to people of riches. He sent him to a widow. Praise the Lord. The jar. You know what um, First Kings 17, First Kings 17, if you read it from 7 to 16, there about, you get the gist of that story there. He said, the jar of flour will not run out. The jar of flour, well, however you are looking at it that it is small, however you are looking at your account that you are in debt, however you are looking at your situation that it is appearing due, he said, that jar, we say it will not run out because God is involved. You will not be stranded Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, the stage of not enough, we are we are put or we remain in the stage of not enough when we rely on man, because at the stage of not enough, man is the supplier. But we can get out of it when we know that God is our great provider. Then we will get to the second stage. We may get to the second stage. The, the, the stage of just enough. You know, there are some of us who are living at the level of just enough. Okay, I'm working. I get my salary. I pay my rent or mortgage. I, maybe once a week, I eat McDonald's. Once a week, I, I spoil myself on holidays. I go, or even if I can't go on holiday, I, some, just routine. Next year will come. It just routine like that. That's just a, a just enough stage. The children of Israel were also, they also got there. They got to that stage. You know that stage for them, when they were being fed with manna. The manna will come, they will eat very well. But that manna, the rule, the grand rule for that manna is that it must not remain to you the following day. That's the level that some of us are. We get our salary, we pay tight. We that is if we have gotten revelation that if we, we need to pay tight. Praise the Lord. We pay tight. 
you pay rent, mortgage, you pay bus pass or fuel. 30 days come again. Get. If 30 days refuse to come, then there will be a problem. You know, we are in this country, 30 days can refuse to come. How can it come? When you lose your job. This is not a country where you work and not pay. But in some other clients, I hear that people don't earn salary for six months. How do, how do, how do, they, how do they cope when they are at the level of just enough? In our life, There are times when just enough, when you are, when you are, you know, the, the, the downside to not enough is that you rely solely on the help of man. On just enough, you rely on yourself and help from others. That is, you are working. You are earning salary. Your wife or your husband is earning salary. If, you're, if you fight with your wife or your husband, it doesn't bring his or her salary, then there will be a problem. So, now, you are also depending on what other people can give you. That is when you will be looking at, this person is not, the pastor is not even praying for me. That is why my prayers are not being answered. That is asking for handouts from the pastor. It's not only money that you ask from people. When they, you say, Pastor is not praying for me. Oh, I, the church, that church, when I went there, I prayed. It does it, is it the church that will give you? Praise the Lord. Just enough. Because if you go there and the pastor lays his hand on you and your prayers are answered, you say, Ah, I'm okay. We are asked, you can be better than that. You can be better than the pastor praying for you. You can be better than. Uh, don't let me say this because I was envious last week when mommy took some people to go and eat <laughs> amen and I went there, I was not given food you get crushed I get crushed <laughs> I went to greet them <laughs> and they also greeted me <laughs> He didn't give me food. The offer. The offer. Uh, you offered when, I, when you had eating. And they are eating our money. Praise the Lord. They didn't eat your money. They ate food. Amen. Amen. When people give you things, and when they do not now give you, you get angry. Because when they do not give you, and because you are at the level of just enough, just, it will no longer be enough. Praise the Lord. Am I communicating? First Corinthians 15, 58. First Corinthians 15, 58. We can get out of that level when, if we happen to this advice given by Apostle Paul, he said, Therefore, my brothers, my sisters, that is the another meaning for brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You know the escape route for not enough is to discard the, 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 the reliance of man, focus on God. Now, if your labor of love is in the Lord, he said it will not be in vain. How can it not be? Psalm, Psalm, I think Psalm 1-5. Let's, you see Psalm 1-5. I wrote 1-5 here, or you see 15. Let's look at Psalm 1 5. Quickly. Therefore, yes, therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Those who God will help, those who God will take away from the level of just enough, which are the righteous, will not be able to accommodate others who are sinners. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Another way to get out of that. First Peter 4.10. 1 Peter 4.10. 4, there are gifts that God has given to you and I. For instance, in me, inside me, I can sing. Inside me. Trust me, I can sing. But I sing inside me. If I sing out, you may not understand it. Amen. 
But what I'm saying is that that may not be the gift that I can give you. It's a gift to me. But the gift I can give you is to sit down with you and discuss. That, that one I can give you. I know I can. God has given me the grace to teach. Praise the Lord. I can do that. That is my own gift. If Sister Komolafe has a gift to, to sing and you will understand, that's her own gift. She may not be able to sing to herself. <laughs> Amen. But she can sing to you. So when, you are, when she sings to you, your own might be that when you connect with what she's giving you, and you have joy, and you are worshiping, you may be able to return joy back to her. Yes, sir. That's right. The two of you will not have been together and satisfied each other. That is what uh, 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 Apostle Peter was saying in 1 Peter 14. If you are there, please help me read it. As every man has received the gift, even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. What is the gift you are giving to other person? Is it hatred? Right? What do they call it, Sister Praise? Is it beef they call it or fish? Or... <laughs> eh? I, I know I've not understood that thing. They say they will. <laughs> They said they're beef. I said, okay, it's the chicken. Yeah. Some of us can. Hey, Amen. If you beef me, I will chicken you. Hey, Amen. Hey, I said, as stewards of the manifold grace of God, that is, you are not doing it for yourself. What you are giving another, it is not. You are, you are just a steward. So you have a duty to be able to do it in this journey of working with God. And that is the way you can fulfill your purpose. And um, uh, Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, 14. He said, don't neglect the gift that is in you. Don't neglect it. Don't, you may be doing it and the reward may not be immediate. Don't neglect it. Just keep doing it. Doing what you are good at. Continue. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number three, and that's the last one. You can now, once you do that, once you do not remain at the level of just enough, not only relying on your own self, relying on handout from people, but now doing the work of God, that is relying on God, you can now then get to the ultimate. That is the level of more than enough. Getting to the more than enough is getting, is fulfilling our purpose. That is Deuteronomy 8 9. Deuteronomy 8 9. Deuteronomy 8 9. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron, and out of those ears thou mayest dig brass. That is anywhere you turn to, doors will be opened. Amen. Now, when they say doors will be opened unto you, it doesn't. That means, that means, out um, uh, different to where that door is, you cannot go through. That means you are kind of caged. For instance, we are kind of caged here if there are no three. We are kind of caged, isn't it? So that means you will face problems, you will face issues. There will be challenges, there will be issues to deal with. Once you get one, you deal with them, doors open, you get to one, you get to another hall, then you'll be directed to where the hall, where, where the door is in that hall, and you'll get out. You get into another one until you get to a place where there will be no doors, no windows. But as long as you are still on her planet Earth, there will still be need for God to provide doors and windows. Because the devil cannot do that. And 
that is being in abundance in all areas. 2 Corinthians 9.8 2 Corinthians 9.8 And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. That is our prayer today. That is our prayer today. I want us to just leave that scripture because that's what we're going to pray about. You know, we started with Ephesians 3, 29, uh, 20, 21, sorry. To fulfill our assignment, we need to link unto God in not, at any level we may be. We may, your own may still be not enough, that is the level you are, but you need to link unto God. You may just be, okay, I'm just enough stage. You still need God. Because with God, you will be able to, he will be, he's able to make all grace abound towards you. Always in having all sufficiency in all things. In good health, in love, in hope for the future, in escaping every snare that the enemy may be throwing at this present moment. They opened heavens today and said, he said, our mantra is that it shall come to pass. Whatever you are going through shall come pass. to pass. The only thing that will not come to pass is the grace of God. The grace of God, they, 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 they are bound, they are bound they, from one level of greatness onto other. They don't run out. Like I said, as I, as I close, this grace is given only to his children. Even... <laughs> there was a woman who went to Jesus. Jesus said, this is, not, this is not for general. And the woman said, even the crumbs are be eaten by dogs. But you are not dogs. You are not to eat crumbs. You know, some people are just eating crumbs. They, they, they wait for what the government will say. They wait for government policies. But for us, Wherever we go, there will be open doors. Yes. That's the prayer we want to pray today. And I want you to start with this. I believe those of us who want to rededicate our life to Christ, we have been praying under our breath. If you are not doing that, please pray that one before you pray this one. The prayer is coming to me in my language. Pardon me. I can't. I went to a country last, this last weekend. I couldn't speak their language. And somebody was trying to teach me the language, German language. I said, I can't. Not at this stage. I won't be able to cope with it. So I'm thinking in my language. And it's coming to me this way. If we pound yam in a, in a big leaf, no, you pound lamb, um, yam and you put it on a big leaf, the soup to eat it. Who has seen granite before? I'm not looking at this side. Oh, apart from maybe one. Yeah. They call it peanuts. And they've not seen the real peanut. All you see is uh, the one. You know, the shell. Okay, it appears Sister Prince has seen it. The shell is very small. If you have pounded, if you pound yam in big leaf and you put soup, in that shell. Those who will be uh, thank you, sir. Those who will be filled and satisfied will be filled and satisfied without managing. That is what you will pray. In the midst of drought, Father, water my life. If you understand, I took time to explain that so that you will understand what I'm talking about. In the midst of drought, Father, satisfy me. I will not be at the level of not enough. As I fulfill my purpose in life, I will not be at the level of, of not enough. Not at the level of just enough. Father, I want to be at the level of more than enough. Let me be fulfilled. Let me 
will be filled and satisfied. Every areas of my life, God is able to make all grace abound. You are God who is able to make all grace abound towards me. You are God who is able to make all grace abound towards me. Father, make grace abound. Oh Lord, towards me in all areas. Let me have all sufficiency in all things. In my marital life, in my career, in my studies, in my health. Lord, let me have all sufficiency in all things. and will not be discouraged. Even areas we have failed that are not measuring up, Father, intervene for me, O oh God. Take me to Rehobo. In the name of Jesus. Do not leave me alone. Do not leave me alone, God Almighty. I cry unto you. Leave me not alone. Father, do not leave me alone. Do not leave my camp. Do not leave my boat. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me, my Father and my God. Show forth in my life. abound, oh God, through Christ. And I know, Lord, make, I pray that you will make grace abound for me. Let me have a sufficiency in all things, in my marital life, in my finances, in my health, in my life towards another, in my relationship with you. Father, let me have all sufficiency in all things in fulfilling purpose that you have created me for. In the name of Jesus. mighty name we have prayed. Lastly, we are going to pray and say, Father, make me to be facilitators of greatness. Those who facilitate greatness, they will be great and people will be great through them. Father, make me to be a facilitator of greatness. Fa facilitator of, 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 of the grace of God upon people. Lord, make me, oh Lord, even as you make this church to be a facilitator of greatness, those who will be great, Lord, make me to be a facilitator of greatness. Let me not just go unnoticed. Let the gift that you have deposited in me begin to materialize, begin to speak for me. In the name of Jesus, you have made me to be a great person. You have made me to be a great person. Do not let this potential waste away, oh God. Let me excel in the gift that you have deposited in me. Let my family excel in the, in the gift that you have deposited in us. Let the CRA Berry Bar excel in the gifts that you have deposited in this place. In the name of Jesus, make me a facilitator of greatness. In the name of Jesus, make me to be a facilitator of greatness and joy. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Almighty God, hear your prayers. The King of glory will make his grace to abound upon you, towards you. And I pray in the name of Jesus, the Lord God of heaven, in the mighty name of Jesus, 
will cause you to have all sufficiency Amen. in all good things. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. desires of your heart shall be granted. Amen. The glory of God shall show forth in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. and you are bound to every good work Amen. as you be as you are translated beyond the level of just enough unto the level of more than enough and you will fulfill purpose in the name of Jesus you are made you have been made to be a facilitator of greatness and joy you will manifest in the name of Jesus your potential will not go without manifesting in the name of Jesus you have you have become a reality you will fulfill purpose in the name of the father in the name of the son in the name of the holy spirit in Jesus name amen, amen. praise the lord